your brother Larry Adeneko welcoming you to the Really Really Knowing God channel and bringing you vital enrichment in the knowledge of God, all powered by the Pastor Larry Adeneko Center for Inspiration. <music> This is the Daily Gem Devotional, making you a gem to your generation, gemstone upon the crown of Jesus Christ. We're sharing truth this morning on how spiritual pride can hide itself. We are coming from Deuteronomy chapter 9, 1 through 6. Let us pray together and right after we are into it. Thank you, Father God. We give you glory and praise. You are good. Your mercy is in your forever. You've been a faithful God, really very faithful to also God in all of this over the months, over the years. Take all the glory in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you for the testimonies and the lives being transformed on account of this. You do even more in the name of Jesus. This morning, oh God, breathe upon that which you do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. <clears throat> 9 1. Hear, O Israel, you are to cross over. Uh, the Jordan today and going to possess nations greater and mightier than yourself, cities greater and fortified up to heaven, a people great and tall, descendants of the Anakim whom you know and of whom you have heard it said, who can stand before the descendants of Enoch. Therefore understand today that the Lord your God is the one who goes over before you as a consuming fire. He will destroy them and bring them down before you. So you shall drive them out and destroy them quickly as the Lord has said to you. Do not think in your heart. After that, the Lord has cast them out before you, saying, Because of my righteousness, the Lord has brought me in to possess this land, but it's because of the wickedness of the nations that the Lord has driven is driven that the Lord is driving them out before you. It is not because of your righteousness, not the uprightness of your heart that you're going to possess their land, but because of the wickedness of these nations that the Lord drives them out from here before you, that he may fulfill the word which the Lord swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Therefore, understand that the Lord your God is not giving you this good land to possess because of your righteousness for a stiff-necked people. Okay? <clears throat> so the first uh, two verses, we see something there. It was trying to round off um, and paint, paint before them a picture of reality that they, may, that they may understand that this is what you are going to come up against. Yeah, that's what he was trying to do. Nevertheless, it's also some form of inspiration and statement to spur them on, actually. What he was trying to tell them is this. Uh, look at it. It says, look, what you are going to face, the challenge is quite big. Nations greater and mightier than yourself, cities great and fortified up to heaven, a people great and tall, descendants of anarchy and all that. In other words, the challenge is big. The odds against you are really, really heavy. All the odds are against you. Um, and history, except people you have heard, and history leaves no chance for you whatsoever. Can you remember that when people talk about uh, uh, maybe uh, a football match between uh, two sons, so they will look at history, you know, as well. Yeah, so what, is, what he was talking about is this, that the challenge is big, the odds are against you, and history, going by history, leaves you no chance at all. That was what he was. But he ended it up, or ended it up saying, in spite of all of those things, God, who asks you to go, that's it. Is going to hallelujah. The Lord who asks you to go is, is made arrangements for you in spite of the challenges, in spite of all the odds, in spite of the history. God, the one behind you, and who asks you to go, amen, is <laughs> going to make arrangements. As I'm saying, who asks you to go, I'm remind, reminded of an old sermon of mine who asks you to go. <laughs> very, very interesting that uh, a sermon that I, you know, you know, you know, put together from a, a story that happened to me sometime in the past. Google it somewhere on the internet. You can find who asks you to go somewhere there. <clears throat> with my name praise god so he was saying the lord who asks you to go he is the one who goes before you as a consuming fire he will destroy them and bring them down before. that's it so you see you have the you know he first of all painted a stark picture that this is it nevertheless the lord is going ahead of you in other words um even if you see yourself as small to so god is big it's like this Oh, these people are like iron and, and we are just like stubble. Oh, these people are, are, are like giants and we are just like mosquitoes and all that. You see, that thing that is like a giant in your eyes is like an ant in the eyes of God. That thing that it looks like an iron in your eyes, why you look like stubble, as far as God is concerned, it's like plasticine. Amen. So that God is going ahead. He will soften them. He will break them. He will crush them. He will reduce them. He will turn them to ashes, you know, before you, even before you get there. That's what he was promised. And I'm saying that to somebody this morning. 
you know, to encourage you in that thing that looks like uh, the odds are against me here, history is against me here, these challenges are mighty there. Ah, ah, I can't even think about it. I want you to know something. All those things that are big to you, they are nothing. They are puny in the eyes of God, and God has gone ahead, you know, to do something. So if he asks you to go, it's because he has made arrangements for you. Hallelujah. Please pick up courage and continue by the grace of God. So he went on to say, do not think in your heart after the Lord has cast these people out before you, saying, because of my righteousness, the Lord has brought me in. We'll come back to this uh, in your heart later. But very quickly, I want to say one or two things. Now, in... Uh, in two verses, he has mentioned this so many times. Because of my righteousness, the Lord has brought me into possess. You know, uh, because of your righteousness, because of the uprightness of your heart. You know, he has said it in so many ways. In other words, there is a way, you know, spiritual pride can happen. You are not going to voice it out. Oh, you are a Christian now. How can you say, you know, with your mouth that my, by my righteousness I've done it? No, it won't come out. He says... Do not think in your heart. It will stay hidden. It will stay inside. Hallelujah. Therefore, you need to be conscious about it so that you don't allow that thing to have a place at all. It won't come out of your mouth because you are a child of God. It won't come out. But there's a way it will stay inside because of my righteousness, because of my... In other words, what I'm saying, a lot of people are going to say to themselves, this thing does not apply to me. Let me tell you the way it applies to you. When something untoward, when something not so good, when something like a pain, like a loss and things like that, you now begin to say to yourself, what did I do wrong? Did I commit some sin? You know, why did this happen to me? You know why you are thinking that way? Because you felt in the first instance, it's because you have not committed any sin, you have not done any wrong, that's why everything is fine for you. That, that's it. That's the way it hides. But when you know that that everything is fine for you is not because of your righteousness, not because you are doing well, not because you have done perfectly, not because you have, you know, not because of anything, just because of God. So when the negative one comes, you not begin to say, is it because or which sin? <laughs> if you are thinking that way, it's because originally, um, um, unconsciously, that's the word, unconsciously, you felt it was because of your openness and your, you know, working right and everything, that everything was fine in the first instance. Believe me, that's not the case. And that is what it means by be careful so that it will not be in your heart. Hallelujah. I, 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 don't, I don't want to spend time by going over it again, but you play this over again so that you can get what I'm saying. The moment that happens, when something unto what happens, and you begin to say, did I miss it somewhere? Or which, did I commit anything? <laughs> it, it shows you that it was because you thought your righteousness was what was making everything go well in the first instance. It's not. It's because of the grace of God and the love of God and the mercy of God and just the nature of God. That's it. Praise the Lord. God help us in Jesus. I want to go to another, another thing here. Now it says... The Lord has brought you in to possess the land. It's not because of your own righteousness, but because of the wickedness of these nations that the Lord is driving them out from before you. Does that answer anybody's questions in recent times? Just think that these nations around this place, the reason God drove them out before these Israelites is because of the wickedness of, <laughs> of, of, of those nations. I believe it answers some people's questions at this point in time. May the Lord grant you understanding what I'm talking about this morning. And then as you go on, Again, it goes to a point where it says the Lord will bring you uh, to fulfill his promise to your forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Understand that the Lord your God is not giving you this land to possess because of your own righteousness, because you are a, you are a stiff-necked people. <laughs> in other words, you are a stubborn people. Does that answer questions in recent times? Just think about this, you know, in recent times. Some people have had questions, especially about that part of the world. Some are wicked, <laughs> some are stubborn. <laughs> and that explains certain things that some people are raising as questions today. I'm not going to say anything more than that. I believe that somebody understands what I'm talking about today. So when some people are having problems, some problems, they are just stubborn people and they will go and, you know, answer their, do according to their stubbornness, no matter what anybody thinks. And some other people, because of their weakness, that's what we, we find today by the grace of God. God help us in Jesus' holy name. I wish you uh, a, a fantastic time today, this weekend. God bless you. Thank you very much for being here.